Hi, welcome to the Pilot for Pulmonary Expert interview. I'm Dr. Jim Donahue of the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, where I'm a pulmonologist. Today we'll be talking about changes to the 2017 Gold Guidelines uh, as far as therapeutics goes. Specifically, we'll be talking about ICS use, Lava Lama uses, and other changes that have taken place. With me today is uh, my expert, uh, Dr. Gary Ferguson. Gary, tell us about yourself. Sure. I'm uh, Dr. Gary Ferguson. I'm director of the Pulmonary Research Institute of Southeast Michigan and a clinical professor of medicine at Michigan State University. Gary, let's start off by talking about the changes for general assessment and management of COPD from the new 2017 GOLD uh, program. Jim, I think this is a really important feature because it's changed a lot. Even for those that know GOLD from 2011 through 2016, there are a lot of changes, a lot of basic changes in terms of the process of diagnosis, how you use spirometry, still a critical part, but then also the therapeutic arms, devices, lots of things like that. So I think there really is a lot to learn. Well, taking that a step further, would, would you ever think that using more than one long-acting bronchodilator is appropriate for initial therapy and goal B or, sure. or things like this? Or so, so, yeah, like this? and I'll even take a smidge of a step back because one of the mm -hmm. things that we've changed is that for the gold stages A, B, C, D, before we had a high risk, low risk based on both FEV1 of 50% above or below and exacerbations. They've actually taken away the spirometry from the stratification for risk in the therapeutic part. Still important for diagnosis, but no longer there for the actual risk stratification. So you mentioned the gold B, which is a patient who has low risk for exacerbations, less than two exacerbations, moderate exacerbations per year, no hospitalizations, but does have symptoms. And whether you do it based on an MMRC of two or more, CAT of 10 or more, or just a really good history that helps you. And so in the old days, we changed that. And so now you're asking that critical question, is one or is it two better than one? And I think there's many of us, the gold guidelines recommend using a monotherapy and then stepping up to a dual bronchodilator if there's uh, persistent symptoms, which is certainly a very good pattern. But some of us actually think that two right at the start may work because the efficacy, FEV1 is better, Safety is just as good, and so I think there's a lot to start making us think about that. What I like is the, uh, the emphasis on the personalization of medicine from that, and even in the new, the definition has been changed now to include a you know, real emphasis on symptoms, mm -hmm. and that's one, another kind of an important change. Well, given that, uh, the leading therapy for many years in, in, in pulmonary and COPD has been ICS LABA. Now, with the new guidelines, what's the role of the ICS and how, how has that changed? So, so I'll start by saying that an ICS still plays a role because sometimes people get the impression with the new guidelines that they're, they're bad and they should never be used. There's a lot of data that you, both of us have done uh, work on showing the value of ICSs in COPDers in combination with bronchodilators. But having said that, as we've progressed, as we've matured and developed our process in terms of how to treat COPD, we've sort of learned that this more bronchodilation really does matter. And there's some newer evidence, uh, the wisdom trials and flame trials and things like that, that we've looked at that really suggest that a good dual bronchodilator may be as good as, if not even better, than some of the lava ICSs. And when we look at therapies, we look at benefit and risk. So the efficacy of the duals seems to be better pretty much across the board um, without any added safety. And so I think they've repositioned. So in a, again, a case of the gold B or even the gold D, which used to be always start with the LABA ICS and then add on as needed. We've now switched it to where a LABA LAMA comes first. And then if you still need it, you might add there. So although not gone, it's definitely repositioned. Can I ask you a quick follow-up? Is that because of better efficacy with the LABA LAMAs than the ICS, or is it a concern about safety? Specifically, in your one of your articles a few years ago, you were one of the first to draw attention to the fact that there might be a, a signal for pneumonia, yet other times people are pushing back on that and saying there's not much of a problem. Yeah. What are your thoughts Great on that? Great questions. I mean, certainly we look at the efficacy, safety is critical. You know, as you know, the numbers are small, the percentages are small, but they're real. And there are certain patients, older patients, kind of 
cachectic patients, thinner patients that have even greater risks. And so I think we need to think about that. But even more subtly, it's the, it's the bruising, the potentials for osteopenia. So we take that as a whole, and it doesn't mean that we don't ever use them because there's clearly value in certain patients. Right. But as you balance that safety efficacy component, Yes, you actually think a little bit more about that efficacy that you get from the second bronchodilator without that potential subtle safety signal of the ICS, and I think that's kind of the push as we move that direction. This is a really, uh, I think, a little bit confusing time for clinicians. There's just so many changes, and I really want to thank you for helping to cast some light on that uh, in today's uh, interview. So thank you very much, uh, Gary. I appreciate it. Thank you.